welcome back to the Roger Sarn Podcast, where we talk all things Army. And I'm your host, Sarn Cruz. And today, we're talking about Project 2025. And without further ado, let's get started. Roger Sarn! All right, what's going on, guys? As you already heard, we're talking about Project 2025. It's a big deal. It's a lot of commotion going on everywhere I see on the internet, whether it's TikTok, some Facebook, Instagram, news, military.com. It's all Project 2025. They're taking away our benefits, blah, 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 whatever it is. Insert whatever panic button you can come up with or panic word you can come up with. That's what we're, that's what's going on. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through Project 2025, and it's going to be extensive, 15, 20 minutes as always, typical podcast from us. Um, so you're going to have to have patience. But what I'm doing is I'm reading this for you and showing you where you can find all the information, especially you veterans who are worried about your benefits and those of you who are getting out close to your time to be a benefit, right, uh, a veteran, <laughs> All right, but before we get started, um, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. I need you guys to support the movement. I need you guys to be sponsors of the movement. I'm not asking for no money. I don't put no cash app in the description. I don't put anything else. The only thing I ask for you guys is to like, subscribe, and um, hit the notification bell. If you don't want to hit the notification bell, cool, but like, subscribe, and comment. Um, if you listen on the podcast, leave a review, uh, download. The Discord, we have a few people in there, I think five now. Uh, pretty soon we'll get that up and running. And um, there's, I also have a Google Drive in which you can get all the information that I put out on TikTok and here. And all of that stuff, I'm putting it together. I'm in the field. I'm out the field. I'm, I'm busy. So it takes time to run a production on your own. So any volunteers want to help out, I'm all, I'm all ears. But before we get started, let's go ahead and give a shout out. To all the new subscribers, I appreciate it. I know most of you are coming from TikTok. Uh, in the last 30 days, we have Anwin7, Joseph Garza, Cassandra Lauer, uh, Jay Grant, Paul C., Anfreak uh, Afro, Matthew Blocks, TikTok Hernandez, uh, Kelvin Britt, Miles, Noah Reed, Conditional Love, Ari Vince Guerra, D Taco, hashtag Iron Mike. Um, Ralph Holdsworth, Clarence Walker, Sexy Mexi, Am D, uh, Good Guy, <laughs> it actually has a question mark, Maith Avalos, uh, Daniel Sun, Emil Hernandez, Ashley Figueroa, Jasmine Brantley, Timothy Martin, and uh, Dan Selton. All of those within the past 20 something day, 28 days in the month of July. I appreciate you guys. Uh, you guys are getting, I think we're at 330 followers here, about 3,000 on um, TikTok. So we're getting the word out, which is the point. My point is to get this word out. And the only reason, um, one of the reasons why I want to be monetized is to get paid for my time. Not from you guys, but from the platform. All right, so off my soapbox, to, uh, no more begging. Uh, but I do want to um, also give some shout outs to a, a couple of people who have left um, some comments. Uh, this was a while back ago, and this was in reference to seven baby steps in hashtag 2023. Road Sturver said, stop. How are you going to say you rocking with credit cards when Dave Ramsey is against it? Come on now. Either piss or get off the pot. I mean, he might be true. I, I understand his point of view. But like I said, when you um, when with the financial uh, Fridays, uh, mission money, financial ready and Friday mission money, it's a progression, right? Get you to where you need to be. And then uh, start moving to making money with credit cards because you're going to uh, eventually get those. It's better to have a credit card than a personal loan, I'll tell you that. But I, I, I understand his uh, thought process, and I appreciate it. Uh, this one is from Zaquavius Brown, and I says, I know this is like two weeks, but it does apply to all people, and I know it's meant for the military. Men, just curious because I'm taking notes on your stuff to help me. And that's from the 70-10-10-10 budgeting rule, which you take 70%, go to bills, and then 10% each for um, going out, which is hanging out, investing in yourself and investments. Uh, this is the ASAP Sud C. This is at Melvin uh, Finally 8078. Good video. I'm about to go to the board, and this helps instead of me going and reading all the info. Appreciate it. 
Uh, shout out goes to Angel Viveros, 724. How can I see the slideshow? Also, I just adjusted my TSP to L65 fund and opened up a second retirement fund where you contribute, I think is also too important to mention later on. But once again, some good stuff here uh, you put out. Thank you. I appreciate it. And then this one goes to at Sayab1619. And this is in ref reference to my five things not to do at the promotion board. And uh, good video. Keep up the good work. Love watching and listening to them. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Uh, this one is from Joe Biden. And it says, uh, active vet, currently GTG ROTC cadet. Professionalism in the Army is just being liked by your leadership. And that was in reference to a uh, live that I did with uh, Bruner on um, is professionalism a delusion in the Army. And then last one is uh, Hero Food. And he says, uh, how do I find the support form? Do I go through EES? And that's a, a good question. A lot of people will be like, well, how do you not know? And it, this is why we uh, put information out because not everyone is privy to where everything is found. And I would imagine that this individual is either, either a sergeant or going to be a sergeant. And at that level, his leadership or any of prior leaders have not assisted him with that. And um, that's why we're here. So shout outs to all you guys. I appreciate it. Keep us Keep us going, man. Keep us going. That's all I ask. The way, let's go ahead and uh, go into our agenda. <laughs> all right. So Project 2025 is what we're going to talk. It's the overall. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys an overview of Project 2025. Uh, then we're going to talk about the CBO, the Congressional Budgeting Office. Then we're going to talk about the two main recommendations. And when I say main recommendations, I mean like the main recommendations we should be worried about. Um, and then we're going to talk about Project 2025, the handbook. We're going to go into there and read a little bit. And then we're going to conclude it. Uh, what I do want you guys to understand is that this is going to, like I said, is going to be an extensive, um, uh, is going to be an extensive podcast. So sit back, relax, and listen, follow along, and uh, we're already at eight minutes, so here we go. Let's share this screen. All right, so highlights of Project 2025. What is it? So it's a, the, it's a action of the liberal politicians in Washington that they've created a desperate need and unique opportunity for conservatives to start undoing the damage that the left has wrong and build a better country for all Americans in 2025. It's annoying to hear that because it annoys me that every every side when they get the power they want to undo what someone else does. So if they're if you're busy undoing, that means if you're busy undoing looking at the past, that means you're not busy doing looking at the future. That's my thought process. So it's always the same thing, and that's annoying to me. So let's skip a little bit so I don't get really on my soapbox. So the goal of Project Twenty Twenty Five Presidential Transition Project. The project will build on four pillars that will collectively pave the way for an effective conservative administration. So it's going to talk about a policy, personnel, training, and 180-day playbook. And where we fall the most is going to be where it's a policy, policy agenda because they're putting policies for our benefits, right? So if we scroll a little bit further down and you click down here where it says most recently – the Trump administration relied on heritage heritage mandate. Uh, if we click on that, it takes us to this page right here, and this is Trump administration uh, uh, embraces heritage. Right? Um, you got to understand that this is from 2018. Okay, we're talking about information that was put out from the CBO and suggested from 2018 when Trump was in 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 um, in office. And if we look now, it still hasn't been enacted. So keep that in mind. That's all I want you guys to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll all the way down. We're going to talk about view list of policies and recommendations and their statuses at the one year mark, because this is when he took office and then a year later. Right. So and that's going to take us once I click that, it'll take us to this page right here. And what we want to do is we want to scroll all the way down because this is going to talk about all the policies, right? So you have the recommendations right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see the highlight. Uh, status, 
And and those of you who are watching on the podcast, you're gonna have to go to the um to YouTube to see what I'm talking about. Um, status and then the department. So we're looking for Department of Veteran Affairs, which is right here. And if you will notice, the Department of Veterans Affairs, these are the ones right here. Oh God, it's so crazy. This this website is killing me. So if you'll see the status, the only one that's not adopted is end enrollment at, in VA medical care and veteran in, in priority groups. So anything, it's not in reference to, it's not to the benefit of the veteran. So they, they're, they didn't even adopt it. It wasn't even a thing. So let's look at some of the policies. So remove restriction on, no, that's the wrong one. All right. So eliminate VA office that block integrated responses to veterans. So it doesn't help the veterans. They adopted it. So, I mean, I'm sorry, it, it doesn't help the benefit. It doesn't help the veterans if they don't eliminate it. Right. So this policy is in favor of the veterans because it's eliminating the, the block that integrates responses. Right. So if they don't assist, then they, then they get rid of it. So, um, and then the next one is consolidate analysis of performance and VA accountability across the VA. Consolidate analysis of performance and accountability. That makes sense? So in essence, what they're doing is putting everything together so we can, so they can, they're trying to make a one-stop shop. And you'll see, and then as, as we progress, it's a lot easier to have a hundred cases in one spot than a hundred cases in multiple spots. Um, the next one is prepare uh, a report outlining longer terms and restructuring of the VHA. The VHA is the, um, we'll talk about that later. Um, the next one is increased flexibility in veteran choice program. They adopted it, right? So veteran, it's again for the veteran. Uh, investigate recent VA scandal and punish those culpable. Um, yes. Give me a second. I, I'm kind of distracted. Yes, that's going to be another thing that's going to be in the veterans' favor because if they're if the if the VA is not wasting money giving um, those who are not actually entitled to it who are scamming, that's more that they can put out for us or for those who are actually hurt. So again, that's another one that is for the is for the um, veteran, and it was adopted. Make effective management of VA and administration priority. Adopt it. So again, another one that another recommendation that's for the veteran. Now, where we want to pay attention to and where kind of uh, kind of gets me is the next two. It's narrow eligibility for veterans disability compensation by excluding certain disabilities um, related to military duties and eliminate concurrent re receipt of retirement pay and disability compensation for veterans. Um, of the two, the top one is the one that really, really is, is, is um, has me worried. But let's go ahead and talk about it, okay? So let's talk about narrow. Let's go into, um, well, just before we do that, right? Let's talk about what the CBO is. Because these, all of these uh, recommendations come from the CBO. And if you look on my YouTube a year ago, I did... Uh, a video in reference to the CBO and how they three, uh, I think they come out quarterly, three times a year, quarterly, something like that, three times a year. And they'll put their recommendations out for the next 10 years and they'll continue to do that. That's what they do. Um, so the CBO, it produces independent nonpartisan analysis of economical and budgetary issues to support the congressional budget process and it's been happening since 1975 so this is nothing new um and as you'll see as you'll see in a minute the two recommendations that we are worried about the most uh the first one is going to be let's talk about the yeah the first one is eliminate concurrent receipt of retirement pay and disability compensation now that's um that's a hard that's a hard pill to swallow because let's just read it so military service members who retire either after 20 years of military service under the longevity-based retirement program or early 
because of disability are eligible for retirement annuities from the Department of Defense, the DOD. In addition, veterans with medical conditions or injury incurred uh, yeah, incurred or uh, that worsened during the active duty military service may be eligible for disability compensation from the Department of Veteran Affairs. Uh, until 2003, military retirees eligible for disability compensation could not receive both their full retirement annuity and their disability compensation. Instead, they had to choose between receiving full retirement from the DOD or receiving their disability benefits from the VA and foregoing an equal amount for their DOD retirement annuity. So that reduction in retirement annuity is typically referred as the VA offset. So because the VA retirement annuity is generally taxable and disability compensation is not, most retirees took the second, which is the, 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 the VA. Now, beginning 2018, if this option was uh, beginning 2018, think about it. If we look up here, this option would take effect January 2018. Here we are, 2024, still has not taken effect. So this is why I think there's a misconception um, in understanding what's going on. Could this be re-recommended? Yes, of course. But if you look at, if we go back to the, uh, to the recommendation page, you'll see that it's 2017 mandate for leadership recommendation status. 2017, they recommended this. So here we are seven years later and it still hasn't been enacted. It's just a recommendation to cut, to cut budget. Now, beginning, let's go back to what we were talking about. So beginning 2018, this option would eliminate concurrent receipt of retirement pay and disability compensation. So you would either get one or the other if this were enacted. And I'm not comfortable with that. Ain't nobody put in 20 plus years to just get one check. That was kind of like the biggest uh, uh, um, selling point, right? You, you get a retirement check and you get your uh, VA disability because 20 years of being in the army, you're going to get broken and they need to break you off. So I don't like it. I don't like this one at all. Luckily, it hasn't been enacted and I get it that they're trying to save money, but I ain't, I ain't, I ain't about that life. All right, so let's go to the next one, which is narrow eligibility. Am I tripping? Yeah, narrow eligibility for veterans disable compensation by excluding certain disabilities unrelated to military duties. And uh, yes and no, you know, you know what I mean? Yes and no. I, I, there's nothing that, I mean, there's some things that can be proven that you can get regardless of whether you're in the military or not, but it's... um. It's a weird one, but let's let's go ahead and read. Let's just get to the nitty gritty on this because we're running about twenty minutes already, and there's there's still a couple more subjects. So the conditions uh, that would be uh, taken out would be heart disease, well, arterial sclerotic heart disease. I can't even say that. Uh, you guys can go in there and read it. Uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, also known as COPD, Crohn's disease, hemorrhoids, hemorrhoids, man, you're going to take hemorrhoids from me, <laughs> multiple sclerosis, osteoporosis, and urine, uter, uterine fibrosis. And there were 758,085 instances of these conditions in 2017. So they see that there's a lot of money. Put, being put out, but you can't prove that the army or the military is the one that's exacerbating it. So therefore, they're trying to pull away from that. And if this would have taken effect, it would have taken effect. This option would have taken effect January 2020. Four years later, nothing has happened. So this is why you you when you go into things like this, you 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 have to read and you have to understand what's going on. You cannot just listen to what someone says on TikTok or someone says here on YouTube, you can't just listen to me, even though I'm reading some of the stuff, but I'm giving you the highlights. Go in there, read the shit that I put there. Sorry, I'm tripping. Read the stuff that I put there, read it for yourself, make an informed decision. And then you, you, when, when the topic is brought up, you can eloquently and educate, educatively. Yeah. Speak of it, but just going off of what someone says, uh, 
I'm telling you, I saw TikTok and, 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 and the guy was like, our veteran benefits are going to be taken away. I'm like, dude, I did, I, I did a freaking podcast of this, a YouTube video a year ago, and here we are. And it shows six years later, nothing has happened. Seven years later, n- nothing has happened. But it can. No one's saying it can't. All right, let's move on. So in this, we're going to talk about the handbook, right? Or the, yeah, the mandate for leadership, the conservatives promise. And um, we're going to scroll down to, because it gives us a shortcut right here to 641. That's where we're going to concentrate at, which is Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, I'm not going to read all this right here. Is again, some more of um, you, you were under these guys and they weren't any good. Now that these people are in, it's better, blah, blah, blah. No one cares. No one cares about your personal opinion and uh, pointing the fingers. What I want you guys over there at Congress is to work together and get it right. We or you guys get paid enough money to work to figure out how to work together and make America better. Like, I don't get it. I don't get I'm on my soapbox real fast. I don't understand how people who are educated and have been in a a business or a line of work for so many years still have not figured out and are so old have not figured out how to be an adult and work together. It baffles, it blows my mind. Like I, I don't get it. Like I get flustered. You're 60, 70, almost sometimes 80 years old. Some of these guys, right? 40 something, these, these guys and gals. And you telling me you went to these prestigious schools and you've done all the, and you've, and, and you've had all this training and you've got all this experience and you can't figure out how to work together. Like get out of here with that, man. All right. So, so we're going to move into the VA health administration, right? And what I'm tripping, I'm tripping. We're, we're, we're not going to get into that. We're going to get into the VA benefits. Uh, let me scroll down. There we go. Veterans Benefit Administration, the VBA. And um, we're going to talk about what needs reformed, right? Because these are the initiative, right? It's need reformed. Then we're going to talk about, and then it talks about budgeting right here, as you can see. And then it talks about the personnel and then it goes down to the HRA. So it all of that stuff is in there. So go into the handbook and you're going to go to 641 and you're going to read on over. And I'm just going to give you some of the highlights so you can understand what's going on. So let's go back to needs reform. So the VBA, the most evident of ongoing concerns and complexity benefits, which can relate to confusion uh, for the veteran. And if not mitigated early, the veterans inter- interactions, long-term distrust and, uh, and an animosity towards the VA. Wholesale benefits reforms is unnecessarily and politically a third rail, but effective managerial approaches and technology tools that currently exist in the private sector could be employed to improve the VBA activities. And that's what they want to do, right? They, they, they know that the longer it takes, the more frustrated the benefit gets, the veteran gets, and um, ultimately it just creates a vicious cycle. Um, so what they're trying to do is make it better. All right. So let's go down to identify. So here, here's one right here. here. Here's the first bullet. Identify performance targets for benefits report publicly on. Oh yeah. On performance each quarter and use the metrics and drive cons- uh, consistent improvement. So what they want to do is make sure that they're, um, they're actually tracking everything on a quarterly basis and they're sharing the information. When you share information, you get pre-reviews and then they make sure that um, your information is correct and you're doing the right thing and you're meeting your intent. I don't have my glasses on. That's why I can't really see. I already read like a third grader, so um, bear, um, <laughs> bear with me. Um, and then the second bullet is develop a new pilot Express 30 commitment for veterans uh, first fully develop uh, disability compensation claim and organize the VBA to complete the first claim in 30 days. So who doesn't want that? Make sure that I can get this veteran. So I retire, my claim goes through and I'm within 30 days. That's the, that's the uh, barometer and it has to be done before that on the initial claim gets you in the system, right? So who, who doesn't want that? Hire more private companies to perform disability medical examinations, um, so because the delays of completing examinations could be eliminated with more, uh, external capacity, hire them. 
We need more. Who cares? Who cares? I don't, hey, man, if we can get more people in, bring them in. Doesn't sound like a negative to me. Other than those other two um, 2017, 2020 initiatives, it, 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 it sounds like it's helping us out. Uh, I'm not going to read any of these right here. You guys can uh, do that. Actually, I'll read, re redu I'll read this one. Reduce improper payment and fraud. About five hundred million in improper paid out each year. So, um, and that's true because it, there's a uh, there's a guy on YouTube that he uh, that I saw on YouTube that he scammed the VA for eight hundred, almost nine hundred thousand dollars in benefits. I'm talking about um, getting their his house. Uh, cause he was paralyzed from the waist down, at least when he got out and he continued to go to the VA like that. So obviously you got to get accommodations for the house, for the vehicle, for him, the, the benefits and paying out throughout a certain amount of time equaled out to that much, almost a million dollars in fraud. So I'm, I'm totally with that. Cause that money could have went somewhere else. All right. So Last but not least, we're going to talk about the budgeting part. And then you guys can go in and read for yourself. The reason why I want to talk about the budgeting is because when <laughs> we're talking about budget, it's never friendly to the person, to the payee. Okay? So um, right here it says the veteran schedule for rating disability of the, uh, the VASRD has assigned disability ratings to a growing number of health conditions over time. Some are tenuously related or wholly unrelated to military service. The further growth in presumption service-connected medical conditions persuade, pursued by Congress and veteran service of organizations be, <clears throat> begun, begun with Agent Orange and most recently burn pits and air, airborne toxins that led to a historical increase in mandates for the, B, for the VBA spending in recent years, right? So what they want to do essentially is um, the next uh, the next administration should explore how the VASRD reviews could be accelerated with clear from the OMB, which is the Office Management and Budget Office, Office Management Budget, uh, to target significant cost savings from revising disability towards for future claimants while preserving them for fully or partially for existing claimants. What that all that's telling me is that they're gonna go back in and they're gonna relook at everything for those who are already receiving um, uh, uh, benefits, and they'll either keep it the same way it is, or they'll bring it down. And those new people that are gonna um, get there, like me, for instance, in a few years, that they're gonna be doing whatever they can in order to cut as much of the benefit out. Again, budgeting is never gonna be good for the payee. The uh, the VA's uh, the VBA's information technology top line budget should be reexamined and reassessed in light of the need for expanded automations across the enterprise. So they reexamine, they expand it, and then it's more people working towards taking benefits potentially. Um, but yeah, um, go in go in the handbook, read it. I don't. We're already at twenty nine minutes. I don't want to sit here and hold you guys that much, but just understand that when it comes to budgeting, it's never, ever going to be in favor of the payee. So um, good thing is that this has not taken effect and doesn't seem like it will take effect, but it's on the table and it has been on the table for, for years already, since 2017. Um, they're targeting benefit, the veterans' benefits to a certain point, right? It's to save money. Um, just like they, just like any other company, corporation in America, that's what we are. We spend money and we try and find ways to save it. Um, it's all initiated by the CBO and presented to to Trump, but it was never enacted, right? Because 2017, and here we are in 2024, about to be in 2025, and none of the those have been um, taken place against us, especially those main two that I'm talking about, which is the uh, eliminate concurrent receipt of retirement and the uh, narrow eligibility for veterans disability compensation. Those are the biggest ones that I care about and they have not been touched. So we're looking pretty good. Um, and last thing I want to leave you guys with is read before you make an opinion, man. Like it's, it's too easy to read. It's, it's, it's more embarrassing not to read and go out there talking and sounding all silly. 
All right. So um, if you guys are on YouTube, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Help the channel. Be a sponsor. Click like. Get the get me out in the algorithm. If you're listening on the um, podcast, go ahead and download and leave a review. If you have any questions, comments, and concerns, go ahead and uh, hit us at the uh, rogersarn at gmail.com. Click on the link tree in the description, and you'll see my IG. You'll see Facebook, TikTok, and Discord is on there now. We have a few members, and we're going to get that up and running, but go ahead and uh, join that as well. And last thing, as always, remember, you don't have to embrace the suck if you got the right tools in your ruck. I'm Sergeant Cruz, and I'm out. Peace. Roger, sorry.